Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite and welcome back to Buffers. If you didn't see the first video that I made about Buffers, you might want to do that because uh, this is going to be building on a lot of that. And I said I would talk about a, a number of more advanced things, starting with buffer type and alignment. There are four main buffer types that you'll be using when you do things with buffers, and those are buffer fixed, buffer fast, buffer wrap, and buffer grow, and I'll explain what each of those do in turn. And fix is the most straightforward. In this case, you have a, a section of 10 bytes of memory. And if you try to read or write from, a, from outside those 10 bytes of memory, then the game just breaks because you're not allowed to do that. There are a couple other ways that you could, uh, that you could address overflow. Another one might be buffer wrap, which is more or less what it sounds like. Uh, you should picture something like the levels in Super Mario Bros. 3, where if you walk off the, end, the right side of one screen, you appear back on the left side or, uh, or the other way around. So in this case, I'm only actually using five bytes of the, uh, of the buffer. So I think I'll, one, reduce the size to five because that makes things a little bit easier. And when I'm done with that, uh, if, I were to, uh, if I were to read out some more data from what would be the uh, outside the buffer and run the game, and instead of crashing the way that it did with buffer fixed, it will instead go back to the beginning and you can see I still need to increase the font size for this. You know what? Uh, give me all of two seconds. I'm going to go with font zero because I don't care what it's named. Uh, we will... Arial is super ugly. Um, I, I like the font Calibri, although I'm not entirely sure why. Let's make this uh, size 32. How about... And bold. Because that will be uh, a little bit easier to see. All right, font zero. I'm good at naming my resources. Uh, let's also space these out a little more because they, uh, it'll now take up more space. Okay. I could have done that before I started recording, but I didn't, so sucks to be me. Okay, there you go. When you read outside the end of a buffer wrap, it just goes back to the beginning. So uh, you, you read out 65.8 and 162, and then you go back to the beginning and do it again. And the same would happen if you tried to uh, to write data into it. So we'll we'll uh, keep writing values. Uh, let's go with um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess F thirty two. Let's let's put in another one. How about five hundred point uh, zero five? Yeah, I don't I don't care. And uh, two fifty because that can fit in an eight bit value. And now, when I run the game demo, whatever, uh, you can see that the, the initial value, values got overwritten when it went back to the beginning. So now the buffer contains the values of 500.5 and 250. Oh, and by the way, and I probably should have talked about this in the last video, but it kept escaping my mind. If instead of just saying run game up here at the top of the screen, future self, try and zoom in on the buttons when I hover my cursor over them so that you can actually see what that text says. That's, that's the debug button. Uh, I, I have not talked too great to a great extent about the debug button in Game Maker before, but it will bring up this useful thing. Um, in Game Maker Studio 1, it will look similar, although I, I do like the debugger in GMS 2 a little bit better. And it does have a section where you can view the contents of buffers. And there there's only a buffer of index 0 down here. And anyway, if you, uh, if you look at it, you can see that it's got some values, and it's also got some attributes. You can see, you can see the type is wrap, Size is 5, tell is 0. Tell is the, uh, the read-write position of the buffer, uh, as I've been calling it. If you were to use the function buffer tell, this would, uh, this would tell you what index in the value you're reading and writing from currently, in case you ever wanted to use that information for something. Hey. There are uses for that. I won't be getting into it. Anyway, back down here, the alignment is 1, and uh, this, this, this here is the contents. Can I select the text? I cannot. That's a shame. All right, in any event, five bytes, and because uh, because it's not text, it doesn't really mean anything when you convert it to text. You can store text in a buffer. One of the data types available is buffer string. Another is buffer text, which is similar, except it doesn't write a, a terminating null at the end. And if you were to write that into the buffer, you would uh you would have a useful value in the uh, in the debugger. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read buffer text. I'm going to comment out this because I don't need it currently. And uh, let's, uh, let's instead of buffer writing a number, buffer write string. And what's a, what's a string that's four letters or less that isn't a swear? 
And it has to be four characters or less because uh, the terminating null at the end counts as one. Pi. That's three characters. Okay, let's debug the game again. Oops. Yes, I, I would like to... Thank you. Okay, so the string is pi. And if I were to look down here at the debugger, I don't know why there is a, a zero in front. Why is there a zero in front? Anyway, back in the debugger, uh, you can see it contains uh, hexadecimal letter values. And over here in the, uh, in the text area, it says pi. And the last two bytes in the buffer are zeros, which are represented by periods. I'm and I'm actually not sure why, because, I mean, what if you actually wanted to represent a period? I guess it looks better than just an empty space, because then you know something's there. All right, whatever. But for text, I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to go back to numbers, because most of this video is going to be concerned with numbers. All right, the next buffer type, uh, you also have a uh, buffer row. And if you try to read and write stuff outside the end of this buffer, instead of, um, instead of crashing with an error, it will add space as needed. Let's go with, uh, let's go with the U32s instead. I don't really care what the value is. Let's just make it, say, a thousand, because a thousand sounds like a nice friendly number, right? And let's do this a couple more times. And now, even though we're creating the buffer with a size of five, if I were to come over here, I can read out values, sure, and uh, let's say, let's uh, instead draw the size of the buffer with the buffer get size function. Is that the, uh, okay, I need one more parentheses there. I can move this code window to the center a little bit more. It's okay, we really don't need to see this object information right now. Right, so the size of the buffer is now 40. And if you're interested in the technical details, uh, the way that the buffer resizes is that whenever it runs out of space, it'll double. And this uh, this is not free of cost. This is not unlike the way that if you were to try and resize a GameMaker array or a GameMaker DS list or grid or something like that, because the memory has to be sequential in order for things like buffers and grids and arrays to work, GameMaker has to go and reallocate a new stretch of memory to the new size, copy the stuff from the old uh, array or list or buffer or whatever uh, into the new array, into the new memory, and then go and deallocate the uh, the old memory. So it does take time. Hey. And you should probably use buffer grow with caution, but if you're in a situation where you don't know beforehand how much space a buffer is going to take up, maybe you're creating a player's save file and you don't know how many items are going to be in their inventory, for example, uh, you could use buffer grow and it will work. It's not... Terribly slow. Anyway, the initial size of the buffer is 5. We exceed the amount of space that we have, so it doubles to 10. Uh, we exceed it again, so it doubles to 20. And then we, uh, we exceed it a third time, so it doubles again to 40. Lastly, we have buffer fast. And this is a special kind of buffer. Fast sounds good, but it has a few special limitations. Um, if you were to just... I'm going to comment out this section over here. You can do some things with it. Um, I'm going to... Okay, this is all correct. I, I can leave that alone. I'm just going to write these five bytes into it. And come on, I said I said F5, didn't I? F5 for run the game. Okay. Whatever you say, game maker, I, I guess I have to close it myself. You won't ask. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, the unsigned 8-bit value worked. The floating point 32-bit value did not work. One of the limitations of the fast buffer is that you, uh... It can only be expected to work with unsigned 8-bit values. If you were to write, uh, let's let's even go with a signed 8-bit value and say negative 65, I guess, because that's easy. And if I were to come back over here and read out a signed 8-bit value, that would not work. It only works with unsigned 8-bit values, so uh, one byte at a time. As you can see, it failed. I'm just going to change this over to, uh, to the correct value so that it doesn't fail. Actually, you know what? If I were to... I've never tried this. But if I were to write in a floating point 32-bit value of that fraction and read out a couple unsigned 8-bit values, um, would it write in the values correctly but just not read them out? It would not. Okay, that's interesting. 
I'm honestly not too interested in the specifics of how this doesn't work, uh, because I just, I should not be doing this in the first place. Although if you're the kind of person who likes, uh, for example, testing a system for exploits, you might be interested in going deeper into this. But for fast only works with, uh, with unsigned 8-bit values, is the moral of the story. So that is one of the, uh, limitations of the, of the buffer fast, fast buffer, whatever you want to call it. Another is this alignment that I've avoided talking about so far. So I'm going to change this back over to buffer fixed uh, real quick. Uh, no, not grow. Fixed. And I'm going to resize it to 20 so I have uh, plenty of space. You can think of this as padding. Most of the time an alignment of one will be perfectly fine. As I demonstrated before, you can read out whatever data type you want and, uh, and it'll do pretty much what you expect it to. But, as you might know, different data types are of different sizes. And if I wanted something like... Um, a buffer that was filled entirely with unsigned 32-bit values. So four bytes per value, and let's add a couple zeros here, thousand, million, so that there's actually a point to having, or a billion just for good measure, so, there's, so that there's an actual uh, point to having such a data type. Anyway, if you were going to have a buffer that was filled entirely with 16-bit uh, values or 32-bit values or something, you might find it worth your time to set the alignment to 2 or 4 or something like that. Let's see, I'm going to come back here, um, reading out an unsigned 8-bit and reading in, I mean reading out after that an unsigned 32-bit. And this is going to have an effect, and I actually, uh, no, hold the, hold the phone. I want to run with this, I, run, I want to run this with the debugger again so that you can see the contents of the buffer. Anyway, as you can see, you got the values out that you put in, 65 and 1.62 billion. Size is 20, because that's what I told it to be. And if you were to come over here into the buffer, you can see that even though the first bit is only is only 8 bits wide, so one byte, uh, where, did the, where did the debugger go? It's going to take out four bytes, as if it was a 32-bit value. Uh, you can see down here, 41 is the, uh, the hexadecimal representation of the number 65, and coincidentally, the uh, capital A in, in ASCII. And this here, the 608F3D00, that, whatever that is, uh, that's 1.62 billion in hexadecimal. I don't really care about that. That's fine, because that's going to take up that much space anyway. And if I were to write in, um, I can fit three more unsigned 8-bit values into a four-lined uh, size 20 buffer. So let's, let's go with, I don't know, um, 66 would be B, 67 would be C, 68 would be D. I don't have a reason for picking these. Uh, let's, let's debug again. And look at the contents now, and you can see that, and you will be able to see once it opens, here we go, that instead of the uh, the 8 bits being all squished together and making optimal use of the space, they are, um, they are aligned. They are taking up 4 bytes instead of 1. The alignment is 4 down here, um, and uh, indeed they are spaced out 42, 43, 44 down there at the bottom. Most of the time that's not what you want. If you want to mix and match data types, uh, an alignment of 1 is perfectly fine. If you're only using uh, a certain data type, you can see what the recommended uh, alignments for different types of values are. 16-bit ints should be aligned to 2 for optimal performance. 32-bit ints and 32-bit values in general aligned to 4. Again, I do want to stress that you don't have to. This is just an optimization that you might want to take advantage of. Let's see, what else do I want to talk about here? If I was smart, I, I would have made a list of things I wanted to cover before I started talking. But I'm not, so I'm not going to. Okay, so there's a couple of cryptographic things that you can do if you want. Um, I'm going to, let's see... Draw a few more things. You can get the, uh, the SHA-1 hash if you want. Buffer get... Uh, no, buffer SHA-1. I believe you can also get the MD5. Which is another uh, cryptographic checksum. And okay, so you can't get the... Uh, SHA-1 or the MD5 of the buffer as a whole, you need the, the, uh, you need the offset and the size, which for most cases would just be 0 and buffer get size. Although if you really wanted to, you could, uh, you could do operations of, uh, sections inside the buffer. Okay. I don't need the debugger for this. We can, uh, we can just run the game. And that big long monstrosity, monstrosity is the, uh, the SHA-1 hash of, of this buffer, and that slightly less long monstrosity, monstrosity is the MD5. I don't believe either of these are considered cryptographically secure, so you probably don't want to use them to store things like passwords. 
But if you want to do something a little bit more uh, tame, like check if a file is uh, is valid and has been, has not been corrupted, hey. you are you could use one of these to uh, to check those. If you know what SHA-1 and MD5 are, uh, I'm sure you'll have plenty of ideas for what you might do with these. What next? So I don't want to make this video just an entire index of things that you can do with buffers. I just want to point out some operations that I think might be uh, common that people might want to do. And uh, the last one that I can think of off the top of my head is buffer compress. This is the only function in this entire demonstration, as far as I know, that is not available in GameMaker Studio 1. I'm pretty sure the checksum functions are available in GameMaker Studio 1. Well, if you're using GMS1, you'll know because they'll, they'll either come up or not come up. Uh, buffer compress and buffer decompress I know are not. These are useful if you have a lot of data that you want to save to a file or send over a network or something, and you don't want to have to store and manage this much data. I won't get into the specifics of how compression algorithms work. Um, in general, they look for patterns in your data, and if they find a pattern, they, they will be able to simplify it. So if you had a string that's just all zeros, if you had like a million zeros, the compression algorithm would notice and say, hey, you have one million of the number zero and it would just store that instead, and it would take up a, a couple bytes instead of a megabyte. Uh, once again, buffer compress will take the, uh, the offset and the size, and it will return a new buffer without modifying the existing one, which is good because most of the time I would assume you want that. Um, but it also means you have a second buffer floating around that you have to remember to delete when you're done. So I'll, I'll just say buffer compress equals that. And I, I could draw the contents of this buffer, of the compressed buffer, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'll just run the, I'll, uh, I'll run the debugger. And we have, we have all that information. And I can come down here to where you can look inside the buffers. And buffer index 1 is, uh, is the compressed buffer. Is it? Okay, yes it is. And this is completely unrecognizable. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is just a, a jumble of random numbers and digits. Although it is slightly smaller than the original buffer, you can see size 20 versus a uh, size 18. Depending on what data you put in, you could have a better or worse uh, size savings. Compressing an already comp compressed buffer won't really do anything. That's just going to be like trying to zip a zipped file. And uh, and then of course, if you wanted to decompress it, uh, let's say var I'm going to decompress it, and uh, then I'm going to delete it when I'm done, and I'm just going to draw the contents in the draw event. I'm actually really surprised, I forgot to mention this in the first video, is that you have to delete your buffers when you're done with them, otherwise you have a memory leak, just like if uh, if you were to forget to delete a data structure of some sort. I have to put up a, a text annotation or something. Anyway, now instead of saying a buffer read from the original buffer, the source buffer, I'll buffer read from the decompressed buffer. And it will be, assuming assuming I did this right, which I'm pretty sure I did, it will be the exact same data as before. So 65, 1 billion and change, uh, the size is 20, the SHA-1 starts with a 1B6 and then a bunch of other things, and the MD5 is, is whatever it was before. No data is lost. I believe the particular algorithm that, um, that buffer compress and decompress uses is Zlib. So it's completely lossless, and assuming that your computer doesn't get, like, bombarded by an EMP from a nuclear explosion or something, um, you'll be able to extract what you what you put in. Okay, so those are some of the more advanced things you can do with buffers. Um, if you were to hit F1 and come back over here and look at the, uh, at the table of contents under buffers, there are a lot of things that you can do uh, with these that I did not talk about. You could copy the buffer, you could copy the buffer into another buffer, you could copy part of the buffer into another buffer, you could get the address of the buffer, which is uh, what you would need if you wanted to, um... My phone is ringing. That's a number I don't recognize, so I have a feeling it's a scam. Please shut up, I'm trying to record a tutorial. There was one day a couple weeks ago where I got like a dozen or two dozen scam phone calls within one afternoon as well as two phishing emails from banks that I don't actually have accounts on, which makes me slightly worried that my bank had a data breach and didn't tell me. Hey. Anyway, buffer get address is how you would get the exact address of a buffer if you wanted to pass it to a, a native code extension. 
Is buffer fill what I thought uh, buffer clear was? If you want to initialize a buffer to a certain value, you can use that. All right, I think that's it. There's a chance I might talk more about some of these functions later. Actually, I do want to make another video on vertex buffers because the one that I made a couple of years ago is only really surface level deep. So I guess if you're interested to uh, advanced drawing stuff and shaders and whatever, you can look forward to that. Whatever. Again, this isn't a terribly large amount of code. I'm actually going to get rid of key, key press space because that was for the, uh, the last video and nothing I did in this video. If you want this file, I'll let you download it in the, in the description of this video. But I think that's it. My name is Dragonite. I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you have fun using buffers going forward. It sounds a little bit weird for me to say that I have a favorite kind of code library to use, but um, if I had to decide, buffers would probably be in my top three kinds of code library for me to use, at least in Game Maker. Addresses and pointers just completely drive me mad whenever I try to use C++. I will see you all later.